A Duluth musician has been getting a lot of attention lately, touring nationally and getting the notice of critics and fans alike. Yeah, she's classically trained on the violin, but her music is like nothing you've ever heard before. Tom Lydon is here now with her story. What an amazing young yeah, woman. I'll tell you up front, I, I really love this story. And the music. <laughs> and, and the music. And she is a fiddler like none other. Some people call her a folk artist. Others describe her music as experimental or ambient. One thing is for sure, she is a captivating performer who plays the violin in a way you probably haven't seen before. There's a kind of poetry to be found in the most transcendent of songs. Music that fills the soul, changes our mood, and shifts our expectations. Is Galen Lee. We fit the fruits, it seems alive. She's just All a little taller than the violin she plays. We but what she can do with that violin. Now side by side, we face the night. And a looping pedal and she I activates with her bare feet is nothing short of extraordinary. A one woman orchestra with layers of melodies and lyrics both joyful and haunting. We pull the weeds out till the dawn, nearly too tired to carry on. Someday we'll linger in the sun, and I love you. My whole life, because of my disability partly and just my personal disposition, like I've always been aware of the fact that what is here right now is not going to be here forever. Her musical breakthrough came a year ago when she won National Public Radio's Tiny Desk Contest, competing against 6,000 other musicians. Since then, she's been on tour almost nonstop, traveling across the country in a van with her husband, Paul Tressler. She's also one half of the musical duo, The Murder of Crows, with Alan Sparhawk of the band Low. She is one of the hardest working musicians right now. Al Church plays guitar on Galen's latest studio album. They've been friends since high school in Duluth. It's the melodies and the songs that really, that are really, really Amazing. Give me an idea of how hard that is to play, to sing, and then to be managing oh, a loop pedal. So hard. It's like her, because it's rhythm, it's, you have to press the button at the right time and you have to, it has to sync with, but she's so in tune with her, with her own, with her playing and with her, her mel or with her ear. And in tune with her audience possessing an almost mystical stage presence. This night a week ago was a kind of homecoming, back in Minnesota after a month on the road, for a concert to benefit Upstream Arts, a nonprofit introducing the arts to the disabled. How many of you are aware of the term disability pride? The only reason I even get health care at all is because I'm working, because I married somebody who is not disabled. Galen considers herself a disability rights activist, but she also wants her music to be universal. I see those as separate, but obviously disability runs through every facet of my life. Um, but I don't like to be like put in a box. You know, sometimes people say, well, do you play to inspire other people with disabilities? No, that's not, you know, I play because I really like to play. Galen was born with osteogenesis imperfecta, also known as brittle bone disease. She's the only one in her family with the condition, but her parents wanted her to do everything her three siblings did, up to a point. One time my brother Ben tied me to the back of his bicycle newspaper rack with a bunch of twine so that we could all go bike riding together. And we got in really big trouble. Then in fourth grade, she took an exam to measure musical ability and got a perfect score. Hands down, the most rewarding and wonderful student I ever worked with in 30 years of teaching strings and, and music. 
Susan Sommerfeld was the music teacher who was instrumental, figuring out a way for Galen to play the violin by holding it upright, like one would play the cello, and holding her bow like you would for a bass. So we, we just adapted what she is to how to play the instrument, and she picked it up really quickly. One day it just dawned on me, like, she could have totally just said, you have a good ear, but this won't work, why don't you do choir? And my whole life would be so different, and that would have been like one sentence. Actually, just two words, you can't. Words clearly not part of her vocabulary or her teachers. Galen Lee may never sell out a stadium or get the radio play she deserves, but she may have found the poetry and music and life. It makes me cry. It's just so beautiful. The music that is within her is so original and so beautiful. It's just amazing to, to it would have been a horrible shame for, for her not to pursue this. Thank you so much. Galen Lee has done about 125 shows in just the last five months. And later this week, what else? She's back in the road again for a seven-week tour that includes four shows at the prestigious South by Southwest in Austin, including an official showcase. And guys, an official showcase at South by Southwest? Hard to get. That's a big deal. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. I just want to sit down and read the lyrics to all of her songs. The lyrics are amazing, I have to tell you. And I do think it's one of those things that you kind of need to be a little bit quiet with the music to kind of get the full effect. And, you know, I'd encourage people. It's easy yeah. to find her music. Amazing woman. Yeah, she really is. Great story. Thanks, Tom.